Good evening, everyone. This is Bernd Christian Giels coming to you once again from beautiful Cape Cod. Today is Sunday, August the 9th, and this is yet another episode of my YouTube channel dedicated specifically to my Top Influencers series. Today I'm going to be speaking about another influential woman from my life. And this is an episode that I've been looking forward to specifically because in speaking about this person, I'll be also acknowledging the wonderful contribution that singing has been to my life and obviously to the lives of so many of us throughout our personal histories. So today in this episode, I am honoring Dr. Thea Kano. She is currently, and I might be forgetting her exact title, she's basically the artistic guru person, the uh, executive, no, artistic director of the Gay Men's Chorus of Washington, D.C. I had the pleasure of singing with the Gay Men's Chorus of, chorus, eh, of Washington, D.C. twice in my life back in 2012, as well as in the 2016 to 2017 concert season. So for those of you who are not in the know, there has been for a number of years a collection of choruses throughout the United States of America that are focused on providing a place for the LGBTQ community and for their allies. And these choruses vary in size and also vary somewhat in the demogra demographics of the people that join them. And they come with a lot of different names. So throughout my life history, I have now sung in five different choruses that have been populated by a lot of gay men. Those choruses are the San Francisco Gay Men's Chorus, the Seattle Men's Chorus, the Portland Gay Men's Chorus of Portland, Oregon, the Twin Cities Gay Men's Chorus of Minneapolis, Minnesota, and finally, the Gay Men's Chorus of Washington, D.C., which for short is abbreviated GC, GMCW. Well, I'm batting a thousand tonight with my uh, uh, mistakes. So, I am very pleased to honor Dr. Thea Kano in this particular Top Influencers episode. And the reason that I chose her specifically from the different choruses that I've sung in is, one is her artistic talent and the passion with which she practices her craft. And secondly, I chose her because during the AIDS epidemic, which started back in the 1980s, one of the remarkable things about that time that has been given coverage elsewhere in the media was the particular bond between gay men and women in that period of time. And what I mean, what I mean by that is it was a lot of the women in that time period that stood up and stepped up and helped take care of the LGBT community, specifically gay men as well as other members of the LGBTQ community. And that particular history of women caring for their gay sons and their gay parents even and their former spouses, that was something that I think is a remarkable thing that we should remember as an example of when we can work across our various identities and nonetheless find consensus and let our shared values motivate us to do something good in the world. Now during the time that I sang with the Gay Men's Chorus of Washington, D.C., I very much enjoyed Dr. Kano's artistic direction. One of the things that's great specifically about the DC Chorus is that it is filled with a lot of really heavy hitting, talented, working professional guys. And by that I do not mean to say that there was a lack of that in the other choruses that I have sung in. There are definitely plenty of guys in those other choruses that also were very great people uh, good people of character, integrity, and had a lot of professional uh, skill as well as held some pretty impressive positions in their respective industries. 
But Washington, D.C. nonetheless stands out because it is a city that a lot of people move to as part of their career trajectory. And so you find a lot of very, very talented people in the Washington, D.C. area who are there to, hopefully for the good, make a difference in the lives of constituencies back home in the states that they grew up in or in the private and public sectors in a variety of industries. So on that note, I was very much always inspired generally with singing in that particular chorus and with Dr. Kano's instruction and with the energy and enthusiasm of that particular chorus. Now, one of the great things that many of the choruses throughout this country do every four years is they go to something called gala. And gala is a choral event every four years that's held in one and only one American city. And what happens at gala is choruses from throughout the country get together in this one city and spend days, several days in a row, singing together, singing to each other, and sharing the power and the beauty and the gift that is music. And while I have Dr. Kano's attention, I am going to share a piece of my own familial history that I only learned very recently in my life, and now it makes a lot more sense as to why I became a big enthusiast of choral singing after I got out of college. I did like it then too, but I didn't do much singing as an undergraduate student. So I learned, I think it was in the last year or two, that my own mother, my biological mother, was actually involved in studying music therapy at one point. And I actually, I might have learned, I might have learned that many, many years ago when I was a kid or a younger adult and have forgotten it. But the way I was reminded of it, if I did know it before, was I found a clipping in a newspaper article from around the time my parents were married. And in that article, it referenced what my mother had previously studied and it noted that she had studied musical therapy. So music and musical therapy runs in the blood of my family history. It's something that my mother studied, and I think I got some of that enthusiasm for the musical arts from my mother, just like I also believe I got some of my enthusiasm for the visual arts, like you know making shirts that are this bright and loud, as well as for some of the other communications arts like writing. So I just want to take this moment to honor my mother and my mother's ancestry and all the gifts that have been bestowed upon me by my mother's family and thank Dr. Kano in this video for all the enthusiasm and skill and energy and hours that you have spent these many years being such a great figure for the choral arts community here in the United States of America. And I very fondly remember that one time that we were able to sit down and have coffee together and I got to learn a little bit more about your background and it was a very lovely opportunity to get to know you better, so I thank you for that. So, that is what this episode has been designed to do, is to name another one of my top influencers. And what I would like to further share is how much I appreciate music, specifically right now, because we're going through such a horrific time in this country. There's over 162,000 Americans now, as last I checked, that have died from the coronavirus, the COVID-19 pandemic. And sadly, the projections about what may happen in future weeks and months continue to be very concerning, to put it mildly. So I miss being able to sing with other people. And sadly, some of the research that I've read in the different media that I review each week suggests strongly that singing is, sadly, one of the activities that you should most, most be unwilling to do right now if you want to be thoughtful about preventing the spread of the coronavirus. And I don't mean singing by yourself. That's still certainly fine to do. I will 
belt out a few of my own songs when I'm in my car listening to the radio or when I put my headphones on. At least we still have the ability to sing for ourselves and share that remotely, so that is one blessing. But sadly, coming together in large groups right now to sing together in the spirit of making something beautiful together is sadly not something that really can safely happen right now. And it's because of the fact that that cannot happen safely right now that sadly gala for this year did not occur as originally planned. So hopefully, depending on what evolves in the near future, it will be possible to have the gala event that was going to happen this year in the near future. And depending on how things unfold, I might be a glutton for punishment and join yet another chorus in the closest major city to me and find a way to sing once more and sing and have the beauty and pleasure of singing with a group of people who are passionate about song as well. So, finally I'll say a little bit more about my own performing arts history besides my choral experience. So, my earliest claim to fame was performing as Mowgli in my elementary school adaptation of The Jungle Book. And I think I was about 10 years old at the time when it happened. I don't remember what year. And anyway, I'll never forget my father slathering this brown body paint on me so that I could look like I was a wild child who had been living out in a jungle. So that was one of my earliest experiences of the performing arts way back when I was in elementary school. I was in high school marching band as well as high school concert band. I was in marching band in the fall and I was in concert band in the spring. I played the trumpet. I didn't really take any voice lessons at that time when I was in high school. I did later take some voice over training when I was living in the San Francisco Bay Area because one of my favorite things to do as a kid was to listen to commercials and memorize them and make fun of the voices or pantomime them, repeat them, mock them, come up with new statements in the tones of the people speaking. So that's a little bit more about my own performing arts history and my arts history generally. If you're interested to learn more about the Gay Men's Chorus of Washington, D.C., I invite you to check out their website. The link to that is in the information box here on this episode page. You can also find information about GALA and other LGBT choruses near you, obviously by doing a Google search. And if you've never sung before and you feel a little frightened or hesitant at the idea of doing so, just know that we've all been there at one point when we took that leap and jumped in for the first time to sing in a specialized chorus like that. So it's not at all unusual to have the butterflies in the stomach and you might just find yourself suddenly enjoying a new hobby, a new passion in your life that you have never in your life before imagined you would enjoy so much. So on that note, I'm going to say goodbye for this evening. Thank you for watching. I will be back again in the near future with yet another episode. I am continuing to do my top influencer series as well as my COVID conversations content and the other content that's designed more to inspire and entertain my viewership during this time. If you have enjoyed this video and you would like to tell others about it, by all means, please tell your friends, family, colleagues, and your pets about me because even some pets will find music and video content fascinating to watch as I know from the world of cats. I don't mean Cats the musical or cat, Cats the theater show. I mean Cats the animals that can't be bothered to pay much attention to the humans that care for them. So thank you all for watching. You have a wonderful evening, and I will be back soon.